Hello everyone, welcome back to part 6 of our action RPG series. Uh, previously we created our first ability, that's forward slash, and in this episode we're going to work on our damage numbers so they appear on the screen rather than just relying on a print string every single time. So let's go forward and how to actually achieve this and position it correctly onto the screen. Okay, so to do damage numbers, we're going to go into create a user interface. And we're going to create a widget blueprint called W damage number. And you open this up and you're going to create a canvas panel into our hierarchy. And the reason why we use the canvas panel is because we can have absolute positioning. So I can give it an exact coordinate and it will place it exactly where I want it. And so in here now, I'm going to put some text. And you design the look of this text based upon what you want it to look like. So I'm going to go in here. And I usually put in a number to help me visualize it a little bit better. Like that. And I'll put in a bit of outline on it to make it pop a little bit more. So I'll go to... Uh, where is it? Font. There you go. Outline set ends in font. Outline size here, we'll do two. Yep, not too bad. Um, and we'll do simple animation as well to make it stand out. So I'm going to go to add animation. Pop. We'll call it. And I'm going to add a track of the text. And all we can do in here is going to do a couple of things with the transform. So transform, we'll make it uh, set a key at start here. Move it along a little bit to like maybe 0.5 seconds, hit another key, and then we'll start raising it up um, in the wire. Like that. So it looks like that. And it might spread out a little bit more. Like that. Okay. So that's that bit. Next, I'm going to do the scale of it. So again, with the scale, we're going to hit a keyframe. Start there. And then I'm going to pop it up. So scale here, we're going to change that to 2. 2. And then on a couple of frames later, go back down to 1. 1. And you just adjust the timings of these by moving these keyframes back and forward. Um, let me just move that in a little bit more. Yeah, I do. And we'll make it then also fade out towards the end. So I'm going to go towards the end here. Add the track for the render opacity. Add keyframe when it's at one there. And then towards the end, we'll set down to zero. Okay. And I'll just add a keyframe for one there too. So it's fading out a bit too quick. I'm just going to move that out a little bit there. I want it to start moving up already before it starts to fade away. Uh, are we missing the translation? Oh yeah, I've zoomed way in. Oops. Okay. There we are. That's better. Okay, so there's my translation. And I'm going to center align this thing too. So I'm just going to make sure I'm not in animation mode. Click on my text and change its canvas anchor and alignment here to be 0.5 in the 0.5 in X and Y, the alignment. And that'll do. So this graph here needs to know uh, the location of where it's going to spawn. And ideally give it who it's belonging to here. So I'm going to go give it the actor it's attached to. I'm going to act a reference and we'll make that editable and exposed on spawn and on the pre-construct I'm going to change the location of my uh, text value 
based upon where the actor is on the screen. So I need to make this text here variable. So tick that to be variable. And I'm going to drag that out of the pre-construct. And we're going to do type in now slot as canvas slot. And we're doing that because you're changing the positioning of the slot the text block is belonging to. As you can see here, it says up top slot canvas panel slot. That's where we get the position X and Y from. And we anchor it to the top left by default because uh, that's where we measure our screens from. So we want to get coordinates of something on the screen. It measures from that point of view. So at slot as canvas slot, I'm going to do set position and plug that in. And the position we want is the actor's position on the screen. So we're going to get actor location. And we're going to project. And always forget which way around it is. Is it D project or project? Uh, world to screen. Project world to screen. There you go. And this requires a world position, which we've got here. The player controller. And the screen position will go into there. Okay. Now this will be the same point every single time. Usually you want a bit of randomness to it. So I'm going to add a little random value to this one. So I go add. Boom. And we'll split this open. Do random float in range. And we'll do 100. Oh, we'll do minus 100 and 100. And use that for both X and Y there. In fact, double check, make sure we do two separate things there. And once it's done the set position, we're going to tell it to play the animation. So I'm going to drag out my pop animation from my animation variable and do play animation. Forward. Now, when it's finished playing the animation, I'm going to make it disappear. So, if you just right click in here and do animation finished, and you should see one within brackets the name of your animation pop. So, when that animation is finished, this will happen, and then we do remove from parent. There we go. So, that is our damage number system. I'm going to go to dummy, and when I take on damage here, while well, I'm just doing print string. We're going to do create widget and we're going to choose our damage number widget. The actor will be self and we're going to add to viewport. And I realized one big error. I haven't actually passed through what number it is I want to use. So <laughs> let's do that. So add a float uh, as a variable with float. Made it editable and exposed on spawn. And on pre construct, we're going to drag out our damage float number and a text block and do set text. I'm going to plug that in. A damage number. And when you do use this to text node, you can expand open and change some of these. Um, uh, ability like or what not this but change how it renders this number to the screen so i like to get rid of the fractional digits for this sort of thing so i change it down to zero and the fractional digits are basically the point zero 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 at the end grouping is if you want it to have a comma when it gets to thousands um so that usually could want to keep in and once we're happy with that we can just close it back up again okay so let's go ahead and test this out and slash away our character now once one thing you'll notice here is that the not damage numbers um well first of all i forgot to plug in the damage numbers but also it's slightly off from the character and that is because our viewport isn't a full size screen we need to affect the scale of the viewport too so let's do that so when we get the the viewport scale here or screen here i need to get the viewport scale so on the controller Drag out here, type in scale, and you should find in here uh, viewport scale. No, not in there. Viewport scale. Oh, sorry, it's not a controller, it's just in here. So get that, and we multiplied this vector by a value here. Put that in. Like that. Um, and then on a dummy, don't forget to plug in the damage value right there. 
And so the viewport scale is a little bit wrong because this is returning the size of our viewport. So this is like 0.87, something like that. And uh, I need to adjust the value based upon the difference that it is on the world of the whole, uh, whole screen. So what I need to do is take the viewport scale, work out the differences between the one. So how much is it, how much smaller is it than the full screen? So we take a subtract node in, put this into the bottom one. And the top one will be one. So that gives us a difference. And then we're going to multiply that by itself and the extra. So it grows it by a certain amount. So you add this to one. And then plug that into the multiply there. So one subtract the viewport scale, then add one to get the actual difference. And we should get a nicer looking placement of our numbers. There you go, that is our ability and its damage numbers in place. Now, what's next on our to-do list is to implement our ability into some sort of spell book where we can maintain and manage our various different abilities and assign them and call them based upon where we slot them, be it a left click, right click, one, two, three, or four on that number pad. So you can watch that next episode right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month, as well as take part in our creator challenges where each month you can get feedback on your work uh, based upon a small challenge I set you. So thank you very much to everyone who's watching and uh, supporting the channel already over on Patreon, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.